He's a gold medal award-winning author who has enriched our appreciation of the hymns and those who wrote them through, I'm sure you're going to recognize the book series. Then sings My Soul and Truth to Go segments which have followed in the past. Robert J. Morgan is here to take us into a fabulous New Year challenge and blessing with the most important words ever to appear on a page. 100 Bible verses everyone should know by heart. Welcome back from Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Moira. The so pastor much. of three the Donaldson decades. For 31 years at the Donaldson Fellowship. 31 years. Yeah. Marvelous. And you don't age a bit, which is totally amazing. <laughs> but the other surprise is that your new book has absolutely nothing to do with music. I have several books that have nothing to do with music, but this is the newest one that we're excited about, and it's on the subject of scripture memory. Now, Robert, you begin the book with these words. This book is about the archaic custom of memorizing scripture. I wouldn't say that's your best promote and persuade. Well, I think that people have gotten away from the habit of scripture memory. They sure have. We, have. we have scripture so accessible to us now. You carry it around on your Blackberry, your iPhone, you have it everywhere, and we think we no longer need to hide it in our hearts. But getting back into this old discipline, the way that they did it in the time of Christ, and really all through Christian history, of memorizing God's Word and plants the scriptures in your mind. So you not only have the Bible on your mind, you have it in your mind. And scripture memory makes all the difference. I want to talk more about that because we're learning so much about the brain. I mean, we've got mm -hmm. scientific artillery to back some of the points you're going to make here. But this is no surprise to your congregation because it represents a year of sermons, a whole series we, you did with them. It's the only time that I've ever done a year-long series of sermons. But we chose 100 Bible verses, so that's on average two a week. And I preached on those two verses. The congregation memorized those verses during the week. Some people took longer than two years. Some people are still working on it. But on average, we dealt with two Bible verses a week, very important verses in the Bible that everybody should know by heart. And even when I was gone, because I wasn't there all 52 Sundays, but whoever the guest speaker was had to speak on the verses that were mm -hmm. for that Sunday. So we kept that series going all year long. And many of our people learned all 100 Bible verses. And of course, the children did the best. Now, this isn't just a menu, uh, you know, of 100 verses. It, it, the second half of it is like a daily devotional. It is. The first part of the book is on the techniques of Scripture memory. Why we should memorize the Bible, what it does to us, how it affects our minds, how it affects our families, our lives, uh, how it helps us settle down our nerves uh, at critical times, and, and how to go about memorizing a verse. So that's the first part of the book. The last half of the book then are exposition, simple devotional uh, readings on these 100 verses uh, in order to give them context and application to our lives. I have here my first Bible, and I've just learned you have one exactly like this. This goes back to uh, 1978, and I want to show you the inside. It's inscribed from my beloved Nell Maxwell, to Moira with love for the years ahead as you grow to know and love God's Word. Joshua 1, 8. Now, this was actually given to me in 79. I'm going to read Joshua 1, verse 8. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I don't think there's any other verse in the Bible that promises success. Well, but that's, this one. yes, that's one of the 100 Bible verses we want people to memorize. When I was a student at Columbia International University and I gave my life fully over to the Lord Jesus, the fellow across the hall who became my mentor gave me that verse, that very verse, Joshua 1, 8, to memorize. And so I memorized that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. You'll be successful and prosperous. What I think happened, Moira, with that particular verse is that many, many years after Joshua wrote that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the shepherd boy David memorized it. And he started meditating on it and thinking about it and visualizing it. This is one of the great aspects of scripture memory is it allows your mind then to mull over and to meditate on whatever it is you've memorized. And I think that he rewrote it based upon his meditation as Psalm 1 
which is blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the uh, way of sinners, sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in that law he meditates day and night, oh, sure. using the same phraseology as mm -hmm. Joshua 1, 8, and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, its leaf shall not wither, whatever he does shall prosper. And so Psalm 1 is really just sort of a visualization, an amplification of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Fascinating. So I'm pretty sure that David memorized that verse just the way you did and I did, and he meditated on it, turned it into Psalm 1. You know, some people I think are groaning that we might, with these Treat to Go segments that you are about to do for us, uh, be challenged to take on the hundred verses of scripture. And memorization is not an easy process for many. Now, I'm going to throw my theory out to you. All right. um, we know that children are like wet cement. Mm -hmm. They can learn multiple languages so easily young. I think, just this is based on my own experience, mm -hmm. I was born again at the age of 24. And the scriptures I learned that I read the truth was so potent to me, it went in and it stayed in. I didn't work at memorizing many verses that are a part of me. So my theory is that when you become a new believer, you're like a child in your ability to memorize. Mm -hmm. It is a little more challenging later on, however. When we are right? young, well, yes, uh, you're absolutely right. When we are young, or when we're very excited and fresh, we can memorize that material much easier. When we get older, our memorizers decrease. God built us that way because when we're young, we have to memorize so much data, you know, the multiplication tables and everything else and the alphabet. As we get older, we've got to learn how to process that data. And so the Lord created our brain so that our memorizers decrease, our wisdomizers increase. And we then assimilate and, and live out what we've memorized. But it is still important at whatever age to be memorizing Scripture. Well, you're a wonderful example of that. It keeps our minds sharp. When, it when, wards off mental disease to, to memorize Scripture. At mm. e when, when we did the sermon series, I had an elderly lady in my church. Right before I started, she had a stroke. I visited her in the hospital. She was having trouble talking, but she said, Pastor, she said, I've got my verse right here. I'm still going to be working on it, even though I'm in the hospital. Oh. And that lady is as sharp as a tack. You know, Psalm 119, I always think of it as, as David's endorsement of, of the scriptures. And I just, I, it's so long, you could pick one of several pages and still be in Psalm 119. Um, verse 129, your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. He goes on and on mm -hmm. about the power of the living word of God in our lives. And just reading it, this is something we were talking about before the, the interview. Yeah. Even if you're not succeeding at memorizing chapter and verse and maybe every word perfectly, the reward is in just being in the word. Well, it is. There's a verse in the book of Proverbs that says, as a person thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. However our mind is going, whatever we're thinking about, whatever we're feeding our mind on and dwelling on mentally is what we're going to be becoming. And that's why implanting Bible verses in our memories where we can, our mind has something to chew on and we can go to bed thinking about it. We can wake up thinking about it. We can quote it. We can sometimes turn off the music or the radio and, and just think on that verse while we go to work or as we go to the store. That has a way of remolding our thoughts. You know, the Bible says that we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm -hmm. And the book of Hebrews says, fix your thoughts on Christ. And the book of Isaiah says, you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And so to implant scripture verses in your mind so that they become then the object of meditation is the way that God remolds and remakes our personalities and keeps our minds sharp, whatever our age and uh, whatever our condition in life. That was Proverbs 23, verse seven, right? Yes. As a man thinketh in his heart, or a woman, so is he uh -huh. or she. And I love Hebrews 4, 12. You know, the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's, it's a soul cleanser. 
Yes. You know, we our, our hearts are deceitful. We don't always get our motives uh, right, and and uh, th that discernment mm -hmm. isn't always as sharp as it should be. But the Word of God is a course corrector. It gives us cleaner minds. Mm -hmm. It it is like taking a bath, like, like your mind taking a bath when you memorize Scripture. And of course, if you have cleaner minds, you have cleaner habits. And if you have cleaner habits, you have healthier lives. And you're more used of God. And to get these verses in children's minds, to, to help your children to memorize these verses in childhood, I have verse, the first verse that I ever remember memorizing was in Sunday school. Uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then beginning in the first grade in our public school, we had scripture memory and I memorized John 3, 16. I've had, some of those verses have been my best friends for over 50 years. Well, Robert, you had a very unusual experience in this whole area going through school, the public system. Well, that was true in my little mountain school for the you know six years I was in grades one through six in our elementary school is they stress scripture memory. There was a, a gentleman that came in every week and gave us some challenges. And then we took time at the beginning of the day, all of us as a class to work on that scripture memory. Most public schools aren't doing that now. So we have to do it with our children at home mm -hmm. and in the churches. And if every home ought to have a memory verse upon the refrigerator that the children are learning and the family is learning and 100 verses everyone should know by heart I think is full of some good suggestions about what those verses might be. Now you have, how many grandchildren are you? I have 10. I thought it was 10 now. Uh, and three, th three children, 10 three, grandchildren. Three daughters and nine granddaughters and one grandson. Oh, one boy made it. <laughs> All right. I don't know how he got in there. Now are you succeeding at making this engaging for you know, the, next the other two generations? We're working on it. The other day, I was driving one of my granddaughters home. She is uh, nine, and we only lived three miles from her house, so we only had, you know, like five, minute, five minutes in the car. But I said, while we're in the car, let's see if we can memorize this verse. And I gave her one of the verses in this book. Do you know by the time she got out and walked <laughs> in the front door, she had that verse memorized. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that we should talk to our children about these things when we lie down, when we get up, when we sit at home, when we walk along the way or when we drive down the road. Just should flow from us. Um, this, you, you say you wrote this, at least modeled the style of the book after a cookbook. <laughs> we were trying to figure out, my editor Thomas Walters and I were trying to figure out what should this book look like? Well, my wife is disabled, so I'm the chief cook and bottle washer, and I'd gotten a book on making bread. And the first part of this, the, the book was a number of how-to chapters with the techniques and the ingredients and, and the benefits of the whole thing. And the rest of the book was a series of two-page spreads of 100 recipes of different breads that you could try using the techniques described in the first part of the book. I took it to Tom and I said, this is the way our book should be. The first part of the book should give the techniques and the motivation and why and, and here's the ingredients, here's how to do it. And the rest of the book, a series of two page spreads on these 100 verses that explains them sort of like recipes. So that's really how the concept of the design of the book came together. So a little counsel on tackling the whole idea of memorizing. And then, as I said, it's, it's like a daily devotional, but we have it right from the author that you can do it at your own pace. And, and, and look, folks, I mean, I think for the most part, well, for the most part, it's, it's, it's one page. There's Romans 12, 12. It's just that long. You see, that's not too daunting. And Romans 12, 12, by the way, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. What a great word for the new year. And what I loved about this particular one, Robert, is that for someone who may be struggling with joy mm -hmm. in their new year, you've got a whole list of things to be rejoicing in with scriptures to read about that. It's, it's really an encouraging uh, theological help, yes. but, but, but a lot of practical encouragement. It's a, it's a little hug every day. Hey, tell us the next one, Romans 12 and 18. If possible on your part, live at peace with everyone. I love the history bites in here. It's just like the hymn books. Well, the, the story that I tell with this verse, Romans 12, 18, and I memorized it in the translation that says, if it is possible as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Uh, one of the great stories that goes along with that verse that I pull into the, um, the explanation of it has to do with Benjamin Franklin. He was a great inventor. He had a very uh, 
uh, fertile mind. And one day he was going to England, uh, crossing the Atlantic, he was with the flotilla of ships, and he noticed that all of the ships created big waves and wakes, except for two ships over there. They were sailing, and they weren't. There was not a ripple in the ocean behind them. And he asked the captain, "Why is it those two ships don't have any waves?" Oh, they said the cook just threw the greasy water overboard. <gasps> and uh, so Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, thought and thought and thought about that. He experimented, and he would finally he finally created a little walking cane that was hollow and he poured oil in it. And when he was out at a river or maybe a lake or something with his friends, he would do a little parlor trick. He would say, now explain this to me. And the water would be choppy and everything, but he would unscrew the top of his cane, pour the oil out on the water, and as the oil diffused, the water just became as clear as glass. No one could explain it. And no one could figure out what is it about that oil or the grease that makes the water so, so mirror image. And well, of course we know now that, that when the wind blows and it catches the friction of the water, then it churns up the water. But if the water is smooth on top, then the wind goes by, there's no friction and everything is smooth. But Franklin, Franklin did an awfully lot of research on that. Well, you've heard the, uh, uh, the saying to pour oil, some smooth oil over a rough relationship. Yes. Well, that's exactly what happens in a church or at work or with your family. If things are rough, if things are a little choppy, then the oil of the Holy Spirit, the oil of love, you just pour that out. And, and things smooth over so much there's less friction there. And I think that's what Paul was getting at in Romans chapter 12. Mm. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, he puts two caveats there because we all know that there's some people that we just aren't going to get along with no matter how hard we try. But if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And there are some times when that is a very important verse to remember. Well, how do you like that? this kind of insight into 100 scriptures from God's Word. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you're wanting to give the challenge of two verses a week, Robert. I think everyone needs to take it at their own pace. Scripture memory is individualized. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that if you wanted to devote 2011 to memorizing 100 verses, anybody could do that if they made up their mind to. And that would be two verses a week and then you'd have two weeks for vacation or to review. And you'd cover all 100 verses, and and but some people may want to make two years or three years or just or you might get started with this and then say oh but here's a verse that I found on my own that I want to add to it. So scripture memory is very individualized, but it is very crucial for our children, for our families, and for our own mental health. And it could be a good personal experiment to prove Robert's words. It changes the atmosphere of every family and alters the weather forecast of every day. 100 Bible verses everyone should know by heart. This is our gift to you this month as you support Crossroads Communications and this daily program of 100 Huntley Street. And I'm so glad that we're gonna be learning some of these wonderful insights for the whole month. Well, I'm thrilled too. And I hope that many, many people will be blessed by hiding God's word in their hearts. Robert J. Morgan, our Truth To Go teacher, stand by. It's going to be a great month.